So it took me way too many wishes to try and get Polar Star, but I now have it, and I wanted to see how much of a generous weapon it really is for Aloy. Here we are with Aloy and Masanori. All right, so we've got Aloy, we've got Diona, Kaz, and Shindia. Yeah, this is, of course, going to be a melt team. Let's do it. Seriously, white block. This is a new one. There we go, 140k on a melt alt. That's what we're looking for. No? Okay. No ice rush, and he dodged. Bastard. So without melt and without all that jazz, we're basically relying almost exclusively on um, Ice Rush. Just like that. Now, with regards to general use Aloy, there is of course another weapon that can kind of fulfill that purpose as well. And that of course is going to be the Skyward Harp. Let's go. Pressing the wrong buttons. Now the thing about the Skyward Harp is that it is a little bit easier to use than Polar Star because Polar Star does still require the Song and Dance. Come on, Jinyan, let's go. So whilst it is easier to use, you will end up doing a bit less damage. It's interesting how that works out. You'd think that like the higher base attack would be enough, as well as the, in my case, 30% uh, crit damage bonus that it gives at R3. But it seems like the damage bonus that you get from Polar Star is really, really effective. On top of that, you also get 10% more crit rate with the Polar Star. Now, the reason why I call these weapons general use is because you can, of course, use these weapons in different kinds of teams, not just melt teams. So with my Polar Star on Aloy, I'm going to now demonstrate the power that she has in a Freeze team. This is, of course, still using the same build, so we're not talking about Blizzard Stray of Memes, and we're not also using Thundering Pulse. Ever seen one of these? Break a leg! As one with wind and cloud! So as you can see, we're not doing as much damage as we were using the freeze loy, the actual freeze loy comp. But we are doing some pretty respectable damage at 20k normal attacks, as opposed to the 30k normal attacks that Thundering Pulse can provide. Of course, with the actual freeze loy comp, we don't necessarily have to use a weapon that gives us crit rate, which is kind of why Thunder Impulse will outperform the Polar Star and Freeze Lotion shenanigans. But really the main takeaway of this video is that where Polar Star and Sky Harp are very, very good in a variety of different builds for Aloy and a variety of different teams for Aloy, you've also got weapons like Thunder Impulse that are very much better than Polar Star for specific ways of Aloy. Whether it be Freeze Loy with Thundering Pulse, or potentially Arc or Simulacra will be used more for new Floy shenanigans because of the higher critical damage. Just those kinds of weapons are much more geared for those kinds of playstyles. Whereas if you were to use something like Polar Star, you can slot Aloy in a whole lot of teams that can make use of Aloy's damage in some way, shape, or form. So I think the best way to think about it with regards to the 5 star bows that exist at the present moment is that if you have the Polar Star, you don't really need to worry about getting other weapons. Yes, you can get more damage with some of the other weapons, but you can still use Polar Star with Aloy in those teams, and you'll be doing pretty damn well. So, that's going to be it. Let me know what you think about all of this in the comments below. What do you think about Polar Star on Aloy? It seems like it is a very popular option for a lot of Aloy mains out there, actually, and I can definitely see why. It's very, very useful just in general for Aloy. The only thing that I'm not all that 
uh, about is just the fact that there is a bit of a song and dance when it comes to using Polar Star because you do need to chuck in a random charge attack if you're not going to do charge attacks so that's going to feel a bit weird. You do need to chuck in a random normal attack so if you're not a normal attack Aloy that's going to feel a little bit weird. And you won't get the full bonus on her ult because in order to actually get the final 18% extra attack on her ult if you already have the three stacks stacked up. Well, you actually need to hit with the ult, and unfortunately that doesn't affect the ult's damage, I think. So the ult will still have the plus 30% attack, but once you use your ult, yes, you have the plus 48% attack as opposed to plus 30%, so that's of course going to be pretty damn strong. And of course, for things like Freeze Lloyd, well, attack is actually very, very relevant in Freeze Lloyd because, well, actually, now that you're not using 4 piece Blizzard Strayer, I guess attack is about as relevant as ever. But it also means you don't necessarily need to use Bennett if you don't want to use Bennett. I mean, yeah, obviously you're going to get a lot more attack if you use Bennett, but, you know, sack Bennett. Anyway, that's going to be it. Hope you guys enjoy this. If you like this video, hit that like button, subscribe for more Gacy Dipper action, and until next time, I'll see you guys later. Thanks for watching. Bye. Seen one of these? Ha! The Temple of Wisdom! Committed to memory! Ha! Why do they never. Yeah, that's gonna hurt in the morning! Ha! The hunch is on! Ha! 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 Look at you, Boom Girl! Shake it! One with nature! Power core! And leaves. Adorn my knight! You're stuck now! I was destined for more. <laughs>